in three, two, one. Welcome to Real Hospitality Live, where I am very excited to have my guest, Robert Cool. Robert is a entrepreneur for decades in Canada, and I can't wait to have a conversation with you today, Robert, about your experience, your tenacity, your business, how you've grown it, your world travels. Um, it just gets me so excited to talk to uh, a man who's been uh, in business for as long as you have and to, to just learn, learn, learn. And uh, again, this is what I, I said to people who, uh, who I wanted to come and watch the video today. This is what a great opportunity to, uh, to hear about your um, big contracts, your small contracts and all of your, and your ideas. So I'm looking forward to picking your brain. Welcome today. Thank you so much, uh, Chef. I appreciate that. And um, it's, uh, it's just great to be here. I thank you for having this platform for, uh, for myself and other companies to come together to share and to learn and to grow. And uh, I'm, I'm as excited as you are today <laughs> to tell a, a little bit about my story and a little bit about kind of where I've come through and where the business is going to. So I'm, uh, I'm very excited about that. So thanks so much. Oh, you're more than welcome. So, how did you get started in this in this epic uh, journey? Uh, I mean, you you now have uh, Canadian Expert Cleaning, um, which of course is uh, Canada wide, and I know that you've uh, been around the world and been to Europe, and you've got some big, very very big name contracts that you've had and worked with. So, uh, let's let's go into the origin story first, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely, I don't mind at all. So, it all actually started back at the Eaton Center, the Toronto Eaton Center where um, I actually started there as a pot washer and a dishwasher. And um, just, you know, I actually liked working there because there was really good looking girls. And, uh, but I loved, I, I can't explain it. I, I actually loved what I was doing. So uh, what the Toronto Eaton Center allowed me to do was to learn um, all the way along. So I started off as a pot washer, a dishwasher. Then eventually I started cleaning the kitchen. And it's where I found my greatest joy, my greatest passion. I just, I can't explain it to you. Most people look at a kitchen and they want to run the other way. And I've, <laughs> I've actually had people do that as I've come and brought them into kitchens as, as they started training them for work. They've actually looked at it and said, uh, this is not for me. Um, but somehow I gravitated towards it. I just loved it. And I had um, uh, some people along the way, and you'll hear about a lot of them, that really helped me uh, to develop. Uh, and learn and, and how to be the best uh, at it. But I absolutely, from that day until this day today, absolutely love cleaning kitchens. So that's kind of where it started. And um, I was trying to move up within the organization and basically kind of uh, corporate or, or the head there said, you know, we don't really think you're management material. And I said, oh, okay. So I basically said, listen, I, I'm going to give you my two weeks notice. Maybe it's time for me to go out and explore what else is available out there. And um, it just so happened that a good friend, uh, somebody who had trained me actually, um, uh, recommended me to the Holiday Inn. And I was recommended to the Holiday Inn as a um, night cleaner supervisor. So it was right within my wheelhouse in a sense that um, I was looking after five kitchens. I was looking at, I had five gentlemen that were working with me. Here's the interesting part, they spoke Portuguese. And I didn't. So, <laughs> so the good thing was there was one gentleman that was younger and his ability to, uh, you know, just uh, tell, begin to teach me Portuguese. So like even things like segunda feira, terça feira, quatro feira, which is just the days of the week were important because I had to schedule days off and people right. to come in and, and bon dia, you know, uh, how are you? Uh, good day and so on and, and good night and, and just to be respectful to them. So uh, I learned uh, their language, which they respected, of course. Now, I was, at the time, I was 18 years old. These men were in their 40s, sometimes in their 50s. So sometimes, as you know, Chef, there's a, a respect thing that maybe wouldn't happen there, right? Sure. Uh, so this is how I decided to earn their respect. So we had five kitchens to clean every night, and I, I was the supervisor, but I was a working supervisor. I got in right in there with them and I pulled things apart and I cleaned and I cleaned. And then eventually what I did was we, they would start and I would go pick one kitchen every night myself personally, pull it apart, clean it. So that by the time they got to that kitchen, they wouldn't have to stop. They could go on to the next kitchen, which 
at the Holiday Inn downtown Toronto, which was right by uh, City Hall there, was a kitchen up on the 27th floor. Oh. But after a while, they said to me, they said, well, thank you. know, They thanked me so much for just kind of taking that responsibility from them. And they saw the commitment I had to doing a great job. So one of the older guys comes over to me and says, Robert, Robert, come here. You don't have to work anymore. You'll be the supervisor. You show us what needs to be done. We don't need you to work. So I had earned their respect. Right. right? And, um, and that was so important. We had breakfast together in the morning. The chefs would prepare us breakfast because it was Holiday Inn, right? Mm -hmm. um, we had things like Memphis uh, audits coming, which, of course, terrified everybody. Right. Uh, so a Memphis uh, audit is, is head office is coming in to dissect everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you using the proper procedures? Are the restaurants clean? Um, are uh, people washing their hands? Do they have hair nets? So, so for the, the week that we thought they were coming, we'd have hair nets on. We'd all have to be washing our hands and doing all these things. And of course, making sure the back of the house, because that's what I was involved with, was looking right. fantastic. So, so we did that. Um, I loved it there. It was fantastic. So as a part of my journey, I met a gentleman in the front of the house who was polishing the marble. And I was fascinated by that. Fascinated. He made a floor that, you know, people had walked on all day, whether it was salt or whatever the case may be. He made it gorgeous. I said, I really want to learn how to do that. So he actually took me under his wing and taught me how to polish the marble. Then he said, I can teach you how to do floors and offices and other restaurants. And I said, I want to learn. I, I just, I, I love to learn. I love cleaning. Like I said, to this day, still do. So uh, he took me under his wing. Shortly after, he actually offered me, and this is where it kind of all starts, where the whole story starts, is he says, do you know Winston's Restaurant? And I said, Winston's Restaurant? No. I don't know Winston's Restaurant. Uh, John Arena? John Arena, no. I don't know John Arena. Well, the queen goes, when the queen comes in or the prime minister comes in, they go there to eat. That is the place. I said, okay, cool. This is what he said to me that caught my attention. He says, I'm going to pay you $2,400 a month to clean the kitchens and the restaurant. And I said, that was more than what I was currently earning. Of course, I had to get a phone call, right? Uh, that was way more than what I was earning at the time. And I said, and I went to take a look at it. He brought me there. I introduced me to Mr. Arena and said, this is going to be your new cleaner. And I said, wow, so $2,400 a month. I'm 18 years old. It was a lot of money back then to clean a restaurant. Right. And, that's, and that's where I began. I, I began. And probably two weeks into the, uh, into the contract, uh, John Arena, the owner, comes up to me and says, uh, you're Robert, right? I said, yes, I am. He says, I want to let you know you are doing an amazing job. There has never been somebody like you that cares the way you do. And he actually said to me at that point, he says, listen, he says, um, are you happy working with the guy that you're working? Because they weren't so happy with him as a contractor, but they were happy with me. I said, you know what? He treats me really well because he had. He had always paid me on time, treated me very well. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just stick with that relationship for now. I appreciate because he basically said I could have the contract. I said, I want to appreciate that and honor that contract with him. Uh, if anything ever goes wrong, though, he says, if anything ever goes wrong, my door is open. Come in anytime and let me know. And, you know, we'll get this thing going. So right. I was, to be honest, I was kind of scared of starting my own business at that point. Right? I'm 18. I'm just coming into the world and stuff. But um, six months later, that gentleman who was so kind to me stopped paying me. And that happens in the industry, unfortunately, way too often, right? That, that cleaners work hard and don't get paid. Uh, sometimes the problems of the contracting company either flow in there or whatever, well, for whatever reasons, right? But I didn't get paid. So on the second month, I said, I called the contractor. I said, listen, I need to get paid because I can't work for free. You know? So I live at home, which I did at the time, but I still wanted to get my pay. So he says, well, I'm having problems and stuff. I said, well, listen, I, I got to do something about it. So I went and saw John Arena and my very first company, which was called Cleaning Solutions, was formed and I started cleaning Winston's under Cleaning Solutions. And uh, what an exciting time that was. Well, this is, that's where uh, integrity starts and where integrity goes from there. Has taken you to lots of great places. Uh, absolutely. So from there, John Arena, um, he was basically, I could go anywhere. So I went to the Westbury Hotel. I was uh, courting Vic Tannies even at the time, which turned into, um, uh, I can't remember, the, some fitness company, whatever. But, and so my big one was the Westbury Hotel. 
Mm -hmm. Westbury Hotel, which they, they, they were actually called the Lowe's Westbury, if you remember them back in the time, they were a pretty prestigious hotel. And I basically went in there and the food and beverage director said, so like, what are you doing in the industry? Why should we even be here sitting down and talking to you? I said, well, I clean for John Arena. He said, okay, that's good enough. Uh, sit down. So I put together a cleaning proposal. John Arena basically told the, the food and beverage director who he knew. Uh, they had a great relationship together. If you hire this guy, you'll have the cleanest kitchen you've ever had. So um, they hired me. And so that was my next move was, was there. Um, and then from there, I just kind of built the business. I was probably hovering around a half million dollar business. So pretty nice business for a, for a young guy. Sure. But I, I made some mistakes. I hired friends. <laughs> so you laugh because I think you know. Rule number. Absolutely. I, I didn't know that then, but I, I quickly <laughs> out. So uh, I hired my friends. It, it seemed to work out okay for a while, but uh, of course they weren't very happy uh, because they were cleaning nights and I was, I was cleaning too, but other locations and my built business was building. And unfortunately I think it just comes to be that, you know, um, when it basically it is when, when I wasn't around, they were doing their own thing. Right. And it put me into a lot of trouble. So I built that up for a while and got very excited about it. And then, um, but I was always, and, and this is probably the, the, the crux of, of my thing is that I always wanted to find a better way. I always wanted to find a better chemical, a better procedure, a better, uh, just a better way to get a better job done. So right. I, did that, I, I did that for quite a while, for quite a few years. I ran my own business. And then um, I'm going to kind of fast forward that a little bit to about, I guess, um, it's actually now almost 20 years ago. So about 20 years ago, um, I was walking through a trade show and I hear this kind of hissing sound and I go, what is that? Right. And it's kind of, it, it drew me right away. Well, in fact, it was a gentleman that had a steamer. It was a small steamer at the time. It was one that came from Germany, but he was steam cleaning oven racks, convection oven racks. So you're very familiar with that, right, chef? Yeah. <laughs> well, Exactly how caked on they get, how tough they are to clean. And he pulled this out and he, he definitely sprayed it down with a degreaser. But when he hit it with the, the steam and the steel brush, it started cleaning right away. I said, I got to get me a steam machine. So basically what had happened at that point was I decided that I needed to start to investigate steam. So I started to investigate it uh, with this particular guy. Um, not too uh, far after that, I actually ran into a gentleman that, uh, who is today a very, very good friend. He's actually the gentleman, his name is Lowell Fisher. He actually imports the equipment. Mm -hmm. We actually um, met up in a downtown office um, where I went, walked into a boardroom fresh. He actually was introducing me to a, 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 the CEO and uh, COO and everybody. And the first time I had ever done that, and I said to them, I said, this, they, their um, business model was they were going to take the steamer and clean gum off of uh, concrete, and they were going to clean uh, the pads on gas stations. Okay. And I said, guys, I said, I think that's a great idea, but I said, I think there's a huge, huge opportunity uh, with steam cleaning kitchens in large restaurants and hotels, et cetera, et cetera. And they said... And then I said the magic words to them, right? Because when you're sitting in a room full of men that have just invested quite a bit of time and money into this project, I said to them, I think I can charge, here's the number, $895 a night to go in and steam clean like a cooking line or walls or ceiling tiles. And they, their, lies, their eyes lit up. So their eyes lit up and they said, well, why don't you become the president of this company? I said, well, okay if you want me to. So this is exactly what happened from that meeting. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but from, because it was all based on, they liked that 895 sure. because I said, I said to them, $895, you multiply by that by 30 days in a month, right? And you're a little under $27,000, right? That's some pretty nice revenue. And, and I said to them, that's only nighttime revenue. You have a whole nother 12 hours in the day where right. that's, Steamer can go out and make money. And they said, hey, we like the way you think. We like the way you're going with this. So uh, they booked me a ticket to Europe, myself and my, my good friend, Lowell Fisher, who is now the importer of this equipment, which is um, from a little town called Torino in Italy. Beautiful town. Uh, they actually, to me, in my opinion so far from all the, because I've tried a lot of steam machines, they pretty much make the best one 
in the marketplace today. Um, and so off on a plane I went. First we went to England, then Germany, and then we ended up in Italy. And the minute I walked into the factory and I met the owner, his name was Sassy. He's unfortunately, he was old then, so he's since passed. The minute I heard that steam machine, I said, that's our machine. I knew that that was the one. So the difference between the German one, which was good, and the Italian one was the Italian one, you never had to stop. It always continuously kept on going. You right. never had to stop and repower up. It was a nine kilowatt machine, which is the highest uh, machine that had ever been in North America. So the exciting part of all this is we brought that equipment back to, uh, to Canada. Yep. And right from, uh, right from Toronto, we started building this uh, franchise which was a company called Surface Corp, which uh, came up in 1999. Um, so it was so exciting. It was so exciting to be able to bring that. And I literally, we actually called up a keg restaurant uh, because I had already been working with the keg restaurants for many, many years. So I called them up, an owner that I knew was up in um, Newmarket. Yep. And I said to him, I said, listen, I want to come in and clean your kitchen for free. Guess what he said? Uh, no, no. <laughs> but here's the best part here's here's the part you'll like chef is that his his kitchen by the time we get to it it was actually already cleaned by uh, a, a contracting cleaning company because the keg always does that sure and so we actually were working with a clean kitchen we were there for five days we pulled everything apart I, I wish I'm actually going to try to find that video at some point so I can post it because it's it's really the beginning of steam for us and in five days, we pulled everything apart and basically made that kitchen pristine, right? Um, and then I took that video and I went to play people like Kara Foods, right. uh, people like Sir Corp, people like uh, all the different people in the business, Kelsey's, Montana, Swiss Shelly, et cetera. All I did was I took that actual camera and I would go and I would sit with a kitchen manager, a chef, uh, particularly the chefs, obviously, right. right? And I would just show them the video. And as I was showing the video, it would never go much more than a minute. And he would grab me by my hand and say, come over to my line right now and tell me what you can do for me. So it was a pretty effective uh, uh, way of communicating what it is that we did. And uh, to say the least, business exploded. It right. absolutely exploded. We were cleaning restaurants, like I said, for Kara, for kegs, for uh, back in that day, uh, um, Basically, everybody that was out there was really wanting, and this was right around the time, by the way, if you remember, we were talking about the chef when they were doing the red light, green light thing, which still kind of exists a little bit here. Yes, that's right. Um, with, with health. Exactly. So there was a little bit of, of fear in the marketplace that we didn't want to get a yellow mark or forbid a, a red mark because they were saying in California, if that happened, your restaurant basically got marked as, as one that just don't go. And, and many restaurants in California, because of that, actually shut down, so they lost their business. So there was definitely a, a real concern about cleanliness. Uh, we were doing places like Bruno's Fine Foods here, here in Toronto, Canada. Uh, we, did, we did jobs for people like Fortino's, where we did, went into their meat lockers. Because here's the exciting thing about steam, is that it's 6% moisture. So I can actually carry it in my hand in your kitchen, and you won't feel the moisture on the floor at all. And the small amount of moisture that it makes as I clean any particular item, I can pick up with a rag. Right. So, not, so it's very different than power washing, which, of course, everybody is pretty familiar with power washing. <laughs> so it's 6% moisture, doesn't damage equipment. I can work right around the electrical components. And um, the results, um, which I, I, I know that you're going to post some of the different things. And, of course, if they go to the website, they'll see yeah. the before and afters. The results are nothing short of spectacular. So cool. Now I know that I mean the all, of course getting contracts with the with the big brands is uh, is uh, a big coup, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Um, I mean through integrity and and just throwing pr proof of uh, proof in the pudding. Yes. Um, there's a couple of other uh, big contracts that. Uh, that I think are in your in your uh, crown jewels as well. One of them being Sky Dome. Yes. So so um, what happened was is that um, I think I told you or the story I shared with you is I was working with a client at Kelsey's, 
And back then, because I was always looking for the next new item or product or whatever, he had a lot of brass in his restaurant. It was a Kelsey's. Uh, they've now since done away with brass. Most restaurants have, right? Because it's kind of a, <laughs> exactly. Right. But I had this special product from Germany. I went in, I polished his brass. He was so excited about it that I had restored it. It was brilliantly beautiful. He said, listen, I want to introduce you to the, uh, uh, this gal. Her name is Sue at Wayne Gretzky's restaurant. She's looking for a great contractor. And I think you might, you know, I think the two of you might really hit it off. So I said, hey, that sounds great. So what happened out of that meeting was, not only did I talk with Wayne Gretzky's, but they said, just so you know, this also involves working with the Bitov family upstairs. By the way, the Bitov family was the family that brought the Raptors to Toronto. So they, they are actually, I'm They're sure- popular when, this week. Yeah, I'm sure with the Raptors just we, recently winning their championship, they were probably ecstatic. Uh, Nick uh, Bitov and Jordan Bitov were uh, very, very instrumental in bringing the Raptors to Toronto and the Sky Dome. So I, the exciting thing is I was all a part of that because what happened was I not only won the contract at Gretzky's and the Bitov office just upstairs, but then they brought me over to the Sky Dome. Oh, wow. So now I was cleaning the Hard Rock Cafe. I was cleaning the... Um, the restaurant in there as well. I was cleaning windows, which is a huge restaurant, and we were cleaning uh, sight lines just above it as well. Right. So, um, and in fact, even up until today, so uh, I no longer actually do the day-to-day -day cleaning there anymore. That kind of transitioned. Sure. But to, but to this day, they still call us once a year, go in for three nights with our steam machine and right. steam their entire kitchen. So it's a relationship that has continued, even though we don't do the nightly. We, we definitely do their deep cleaning. They love us. Um, and, and I've transitioned through several chefs there. And each chef just tells the next chef, this is the guy you got to call because he's going to make sure that your kitchen looks its best, um, you know, when it, when it comes to specifically tied to audit time, right? Sure. So that's what happened. Here I am. I'm doing the Sky Dome. Like you said, it blew my mind. It, you know, I'm in Toronto. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I looked at... Um, the CN Tower right next to it. And I'll be honest with you, I never even imagined in a million years of even approaching them. And I don't know why, but you know, let's fast forward that a little bit, which is kind of exciting. I meet my, my partner, Johnny. Uh, I really was wishing he could be here today, but he's actually out with his wife uh, for, uh, for, the, for her birthday at a very special meal in wow. Toronto. So he couldn't be here, but maybe next time. But anyway, so, um, the CN Tower, he actually, I met him about 18 months ago. He was cleaning a Cactus Club and right. Cake and several other very large, very profitable, high volume businesses. And he said to me, he says, you know what? He says, I want to clean the CN Tower. And I said, well, then we should do that. We should find a way, formulate a strategy. We actually went on LinkedIn and we just said, hey, chef, listen, if you're ever looking for a, a company that is, you know, really good at cleaning back of the house, we would love the opportunity to talk to you. What was really cool about that and what I love about Chef Morris, Chef Morris is, is the chef at the CN Tower, phenomenal chef, amazing guy. All he said, he wrote back, he says, listen, I'm not really sure where we are with that right now, but I'm going to keep you guys in mind. But he did go to our website and he did check out some of the things we do. About a week later, he responds back. He says, as a matter of fact, I'd like you guys to come in and give me a quote. And we went in and gave him a quote. And when we showed him the links to what, like the equipment, the chemicals, the, the planning, the strategy, uh, there are nine staff members there every single night that clean all those kitchens, including the kitchen right up on the uh, 360, right? Yeah. By the way, it's a view you never get sick of. Oh, no. Because when I go up to see the guys up there, right, and, and check and do my stuff, right, I always go out and take a view of, of what I believe is a beautiful city. Not that Vancouver isn't a beautiful city. Oh, hey. It's a gorgeous city, but Toronto, Toronto is quite, it's my home, so it's a beautiful city. And the view is always stunning. No, no two ways about it. So he invited us in. He actually said to us, he says, your price is a little high. But we are, uh, we, we really want to work with you. So how can we find a way to bring a number that we can work with and that you can work with to, to get the result? Right. We negotiated and we came up with the number. Uh, we just finished, uh, just recently being there for our first year. And they actually called us and said, listen, we'd like you to come down because we'd like to renew for another year. 
that was absolutely, I mean, that, you know, that's validation that you're doing it, you're hitting the mark, you're yeah, absolutely. hitting your goals, and that the chefs there are pleased. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, one of the greatest things I love to do and, uh, is, is when a chef comes in to the kitchen after uh, if first thing in the morning, sometimes it's four o'clock, as you know, five o'clock in the morning, and they just come in, they go, they kind of look at you and say, thank you. Thank you for giving me uh, basically a, an opportunity to have a, a fresh start to my day. And now I feel like I can really put out some excellent meals and, and get going. So uh, I, I love doing that more than anything. I, I, I like that you um, took the opportunity to mention the negotiation process with the, with the CN Tower people. Um, now, it's, it's one thing to, to talk about, hey, you're moving on up and you're doing the CN Tower and you're also doing Sky Dome and uh, the bigger names like uh, Kelsey's in the keg. Um, but I, I know that you clean smaller restaurants too and smaller, and smaller venues. So if, if, uh, if a smaller operator wants the same quality of, uh, of work done and they come and approach you, um, what, what advice can you give them on looking at their budget to, to fit that in, to make it work? Absolutely. So, um, I think the perfect example of that is, um, I work with a chef, uh, a very good chef and a brilliant chef. Uh, his name is, uh, uh, forgetting his name, Michael Cipolo. So Michael Cipolo, chef Cipolo, uh, worked with uh, a very large company. He was actually the, uh, founder of, uh, the concept and, and everything of the beer market. So the beer market is a very successful chain of restaurants that uh, eventually Kara, which is now recipe acquired. So he was working with them. He had a big budget and I met him there and he was very impressed with our deep cleaning, very impressed with our nightly procedures and everything else. Um, uh, Kara went through some uh, shifts and stuff like that when they, um, you know, as they acquired other companies and they were somewhat purchased themselves by a financial uh, institution and so on. So they went through some changes and there was some, you know, I guess uh, the chef uh, didn't see eye to eye with the new movement of where recipe was going. So he decided to go out on his own and he started a company called Local Restaurants Inc., which is uh, based out of Hamilton. And uh, the first restaurant that he ever brought up was a a restaurant called Hamburger. And that uh, restaurant was on King William, right downtown Hamilton. And, um, uh, so he called me up. He says, Robert, he says, listen, I loved what you did for me at beer market. I'm a smaller restaurant now. Can you help me? Can you, can, can you help me? Uh, I don't have that kind of budget. I said, absolutely chef. Let me come down and see you and let's discuss this and let's talk about what your needs are and how we can put together a budget that makes sense for you. Uh, but gets the results that you're looking for. And in fact, uh, he had tried to clean his own restaurant for probably a period of about six months. Right. And after six months, he said, you know what? It's just too much. I can't get the quality. I can't, I can't focus on what I'm supposed to be focusing on, which is my guest when I'm, you know. So he said, so anyway, so I went in and sat down with him. And it was as simple as this, chef. All we said was, uh, when it comes to the kitchen, if you could get it mop ready for me, if you could just sweep it and have your staff kind of, you know, work, work in a, in a, what I call an organized and efficient way. And, you know, just don't kick things under the oven. You, and you know what I'm talking about, chef, <laughs> yes. uh, because when we get busy, that's what happens. And I know that, but right. if we can sweep up at the end of the night and you take your garbage out and just leave the floor. So all I have to do is come in, soak it, scrub it down and wet vac it. That will save me half an hour a night. And he said, Oh, that's amazing. Then I said, if in the front of the house, if you could just lift up all the chairs, right? Um, that'll save me probably about another 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it was. And I said, that way I don't. So it came out to almost about an hour of labor savings, which at today's rates is roughly between 18 and $20 an hour. So that was a $600 difference. So I was able to offer him a price. He had two restaurants side by side. By side. One was hamburger. One was fish and chip. Right. Uh, small restaurants. I mean, we're talking 30 seats. So they're small restaurants, right? And uh, we were able to put a price together for him that absolutely met his needs and met his budgets. And uh, in fact, today, he's now expanding into St. Catharines at another hamburger at a, uh, a Mexican place called Lost and Found, which is really exciting. Um, and he also expanded over to Ottawa Street, which is right around the corner from Tim Hortons Field. So he now has five restaurants. And um, in some of the other restaurants, he actually hired other companies, uh, like in St. Catharines. He actually hired another company. 
And, uh, but he found that he said, Robert, um, what he liked about me was he could come in on a Monday morning and he would see me there and I'd be checking on the quality of cleaning. Cause one of the things that I do for all of our clients is we have an accountability program where we not only make our contracting cleaner that works with us accountable to his results, but we want to be accountable to the result of the, of the owner of the restaurant, of, of the chef, of the general manager and everything else. So I do audits on a frequent basis and I just check to make sure that we're following all the proper procedures. So I'm at Hamburger. First of all, for instance, last night was a gorgeous night here in Toronto. I was at Hamburger on Ottawa Street having a hamburger and a beautiful chips and a nice beer and enjoying it. Uh, maybe because I know the restaurant's clean. That might be one of the reasons, but, but definitely I'll tell you. <laughs> but I will, I will tell you something though. The, um, uh, the chef, uh, chef Chipolo, if you ask anybody and it's, it's kind of coming up here in, in the, in the Hamilton area, particularly that people will come from all over. They're saying that it's one of the best burgers they've ever had. And I got to say, it really is. It's a delicious, his, me, his whole menu, his whole menu is wonderful. So yeah, we can work with Michael Chipolo at one restaurant or five restaurants. Um, I have friends that are chefs that where they have 20 and 30 and 40 seat restaurants and we work with them from everything from showing them the proper chemicals to helping their staff clean better. We are willing to do it all. So we're not just uh, willing to take it only if you want a contract, but we're willing to support them in every way at right. every, stage, at, at every stage of the game. So after all of these years and all of these big contracts and smaller contracts and coming up from working as a, as a, a dishwasher, what yes. do you think is the, is the, is the one thing that has had is, has it kept you on the rails and, and, and moving up to the top of the CN tower? I, th I think the one thing was just, I 40 years in and I still love what I do. I absolutely, I, I it's, it's within my DNA. I love cleaning. I mean, I, uh, today I obviously run sales and marketing. I'm out there every day knocking right. on doors and, and I'm currently working on some software packages to improve our lead generation and stuff like that. But at the, at the end of the day, so I was very blessed this morning, for example, I was able to uh, choose to get up at 4 a.m. And at 4 a.m. I went over to a local Jack Astor's here where we are doing the cleaning and uh, the cleaner needed a new wet vacuum because his other wet vacuum had just, you know, kind of blown up sort of thing, right? As they do. <laughs> As they do, that's right. So I was able to, so if you see what has happened with me is, is it's, it's, my attitude is one of gratitude. I can't tell you, chef, how grateful I am. Uh, I am a cleaner in my heart. I love cleaning. I love when a chef comes in and says to me, Robert, thank you so much. Uh, you know, you've done an amazing job especially when we do the deep cleans, the wow factor is, is amazing. But um, I, I will say that uh, I feel so blessed because I've traveled around the world, as you mentioned. I traveled to Italy to bring steam back. I've traveled all throughout Canada. Canada is a beautiful, beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Went out to Vancouver. I've cleaned the milestones in Vancouver for Cara. They've sent, they actually sent me out there because they were so pleased with the results here. So I went out to Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Victoria, and we currently do some work out in Newfoundland. So I've been able to travel across the country, meet some phenomenal, amazing people, hardworking chefs, owners, um, and be able to provide, I hope for them, just the cleanest possible restaurant or facility so that they, I truly believe in my heart that a clean back of the house, for instance, because I'm going to focus on that just for a second, sure, show, shows, shows up in the front of the house. Yeah. It always shows up. In other words, I mean, you would never plate a meal and not have that plate look as perfect as you can. Well, it all starts with the back of the house. It starts with the attitude of the chefs and the sous chef and the, everybody that's there, the produce that you get, the product that you bring in. Um, and I, th I mean, I don't think I have to tell you because you are a chef. To be able to work in an environment that's clean, I think is, is, is at the core necessary. It's where it's gotta start. I, I truly believe that cleanliness is, you know, showing my faith maybe a little bit, but cleanliness is next to godliness. I really do. I really do. And so it drives me every day. I love, I love amen. the, yeah, I, amen. There you go. I love, I love the people I work with. I've been able to, you know, I'm a cleaner that's traveled around the world, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Italy, uh, all throughout the States. Uh, some trips that were a lot of fun, like New Orleans. 
um, where, you know, I don't remember much, but it was a great trip. Uh, <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm a very blessed person. And I think the, uh, today more than ever, um, after particularly recently going through a couple of situations, health situations in my life, I love life more now today than I've ever loved it. And I'm loving people more than ever. Uh, so I love talking with the people, right? Like the truth is, is that I could easily get away from sales and marketing because I can jump in any day to the operations and I love it. So just recently I, I was down at a, at a restaurant and so the chef says to me, says, I've got a, uh, a grease catch and it won't come out. It's like, I don't know what to do. Rob, can you help me? So I looked at it. It was very simple. Just the way it was constructed was, was poorly done. The, the, um, the panel where uh, the bottom of the broilers was covering to take the grease trap out. So I, I actually had to take it off. I finally got the grease trap out, was able to empty the grease, which of course, you know, is just, is gonna cause any kinds of, of hazards such as slip fall yep. or perhaps even fire, right? Which would be terrible. So we were able to do that. And I said to him, I said, just take it to your engineering department, cut off this one little piece here, make it a little bit shorter, and then you won't have to take this panel off. He said, Robert, I've been, thinking about this for the last four months, how to fix this. And you come in here and it's just because it's my nature. I see things and I, I am by nature a solution um, based person, right? That if there's a problem, let's find a solution. And more importantly, chef, let's find where the core part of that problem is. Let's deal with that. Let's not just put a bandaid on it. Let's right. find out what the real problem is. Let's deal with it. And then let's, let's move on in a positive direction. So, I am so blessed to be in this business 40 years later. And, um, and I just know that it's, it's I mean, it, it's just going to get better and better. Well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, whether it's uh, uh, what we, we usually start off as a short conversation on the phone and we could talk for days and days about the industry. And, and even I find myself thinking, you know, all the days and I'm, I'm always been a stickler for a clean kitchen to the point where, if you talk to uh, to people who have worked for me and under me, I'm the guy who will have his whites on and yes. go down on my belly on the floor and look under the equipment to see that it's clean. And if that if my whites are not clean when I come back up, there's hell to pay. Absolutely. <laughs> Where have you been my whole life? <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? I'm glad we met now, and I'm telling you, I I'm the I I want to make it available for any chef or anybody because I do the same thing, chef. As I go and do my audits. I get right down on the floor. I get my flashlight right underneath because as you know, these are places where if you don't take care of them, they become problematic. Oh. And then, uh, you know, it only takes a little bit before you start getting a couple of pests, which means you get a lot of pests okay. and no restaurant owner, nobody wants that. And so if you really pay attention to, uh, and, and it's not something that these are not necessarily daily activities, but they can't be neglected. Like I feel that the industry, I just feel that the industry has not, really taken an accounting of what does it really take to properly clean my restaurant, my kitchen, my front of the house, my washrooms. Um, and um, so as a result, I think what they've done is they just said, nah, we, we, we don't know what it's all going to take. Or they let an accountant, unfortunately, right. nothing wrong with accountants. I'm not trying to put them down, but don't let an accountant set your budget uh, for your cleaning because he probably doesn't know what it actually takes. Definitely, it has to be attached to profitability and sales and all those kinds of things and square footage. But at the end of the day, who should really be creating that budget is uh, myself and yourself, if, if it's your facility, right. because you know what you want, I know how to deliver, and, and, then, and then we just set a budget for it. And then we work from what I call an appropriate budget. Once right. you have an appropriate budget, then you can have an expectation of a clean facility. Sure. Well, it's interesting that you say that about um different about different parts of of operation because um i've said for years and somebody told told me a hundred years ago that operating an op uh, a restaurant isn't knowing how to do a few things well it's it's a million little things and i know um i mean it's uh i, I hear that it's not quite summer yet where you are no, the summer hasn't completely. So, uh, <laughs> although, although today it's like 23 and it's humid, right. and uh, it is a little bit warm, so it's it's finally coming. It's finally coming. But I mean that that leads into patio season, beer season, beer taps, fruit flies, all of those things. I know, um, you know, in the past I've uh, I've run into that too, and I know that you guys look after that. And you've got solutions for that too. 
I mean, it's, um, th that's one of the million things, right? A absolutely. So uh, most of our clients out here have some real challenges in their bar areas with fruit flies and, and those kinds of things. And they've gone to all lengths to like things like covering the beer, covering the, uh, you know, with, cell, uh, with uh, saran wrap, covering the, the pot machines and so on. The number one thing is you have to have a clean bar. You don't have a clean bar. You have uh, an opportunity for them to uh, find places to to grow and, and lay their eggs. Uh, drains is another area that is very critical that drains are clean and that you even take the top off and, and we take our steam and clean right around the rim and actually kill any potential stuff that's going on. So I won't say that we can eliminate it 100%, but I will say that with steam in cleaning and keeping the area clean and, and, and having a, what I will call and I'm going to kind of coin this phrase a little bit, a clean conscience about it, a clean consciousness, just keeping things clean, wiping things. And then, yes, we actually have a chemical that we currently use, which creates what's, what I call it as a biofilm, which the, um, uh, the fruit flies don't like. Yeah. So they, yeah, so they end up not reproducing. So there's very, very few. They're, the only fruit flies that are there are from perhaps the fact that there is, as you know, on every bar, lemons and limes and different things like that so they are attracted still to that right but the we've been able to bring the level of of uh, fruit flies down excuse me significantly yeah and uh so the secret to it is a clean bar making sure that the staff has clean uh you know clean consciousness on their mind that they're keeping things clean and wrapping things and then this spray has been huge for us whether we're doing a keg cactus club or any of the contracts or even like i said um even uh the uh, the the hamburger uh, location for Michael Chipolo spraying this product down allows it to to create the biofilm that doesn't allow the fruit flies to come back. So yeah, we've been able to really reduce, not eliminate completely, but certainly reduce the number so that it's not they're not attacking the guests too, right? right? That's the last thing you want is a fly or a fruit fly or anything like that start buzzing around uh, you know your clients, right? It just takes away from the experience. Well, this is, a, this is the season for that, so that's why I wanted to bring it up. I mean, it's always, they're always like un, un, unwelcome seasonal guests that uh, you want to be rid of. Um, Absolutely. I do, we do, ha we do leave this open for um, question and answers. Uh, and we do uh, post this live video, obviously, onto um, uh, YouTube, so we can expect that up um, usually within a week of a of the of the live show. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to speak with you, Robert. Um, like I said in the in the introduction, um, your your entrepreneurial spirit, your experience, um, your success, and uh, even even the the mindset to say you know what if uh, uh, if if you if you stay within the lines and you do a good job and you keep your integrity and you have uh, have guts enough to go and ask for the contract then uh, you know what you you can be successful in any business that you put your mind to and uh, and I've been looking forward to this conversation for several weeks since we first talked about bringing you on. Um, for people who want to learn more about your business and more about you, I mean, obviously you're on LinkedIn um, and connected with myself, um, and and coincidentally also with the chef from the CN Tower. <laughs> That's right. That's and right. People can also find you on your website, uh, which is uh, CanadianExpertCleaning.com. That's correct. I got that correct. I always have to correct myself in Canada whether or not it's .ca or .com. So I just want to be sure. It's definitely .com. Well. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm going to, we'll, we'll wrap this up unless there's anything you want to add today. I guess I just wanted to say one last thing, if I could just kind of like a closing Please statement, do. if you will. So one of the things that we're doing, uh, we're focusing on, on coming into restaurants and showing them how on budget they can be a lot cleaner. One of our uh, main uh, targets is the, the deep cleaning or the steam cleaning of equipment, ceiling tiles, walls, uh, the washrooms, the bars, and so on. But the other thing is, is that we are launching in the next little while a company that is, I've had a passion and a vision for, for uh, since I started this, and it's called iClean Network. So it's not up and running yet. It's something that we're, we're, we're going to be launching. The purpose of iClean Network is to network across Canada, North America, and even, I hope, globally, 
to connect not only cleaning contractors, but owners of restaurants and owners of hotels and uh, owners of multiple units and so on, like, like the Karas, like the Teriyaki uh, uh, people as well and stuff like that, so that they have an area to go to to kind of begin to ask some questions. Like you said, if, if they're having difficulties with cleaning or, or budgets or they can't seem to find the right cleaners, um, I love to take the knowledge that I've acquired over 40 years and be able to pass that on. And that's really what that network is going to do. It's going to pass on that information. Um, I've been out to Calgary. I've been out to the beautiful city of Vancouver. My daughters both live in Victoria and Tofino, and I'm, I'm probably going to be out there, I would imagine, in the next month. But I guess what I just wanted to close with saying is that I just love to serve in this industry. And that's what iCleaning Network is all going to be about, uh, is going to be serving the, uh, not just the hospitality industry, I'm, I'm going to open it up to the entire cleaning industry, but definitely in the hospitality sector is to work with chefs like yourself, to work with uh, chefs like Chef Morris, and everybody in between to help them get the cleanest facilities that they possibly can. So that's, um, that's really what our dream is and our vision, and, and we're excited uh, to, to do that. So thank you so much for this opportunity to talk with you and to talk with everybody that, uh, you know, will we'll get this message. Well, I, I think the iClean concept is a wonderful resource and to have access to you and your expertise is huge. Thank it's you. Huge. And I can't wait to see it grow and I can't wait to help be a part of it if, if there's any way I can through our, yeah. through our global network as well. Um, Abs absolutely. You. Again, Robert Cool, uh, uh, Canadian expert cleaning, uh, 40 years in the industry. Uh, this has been Real Hospitality Live, and thank you everybody for watching today live and also on our YouTube channel where you are welcome to come on, ask questions, uh, and I'm sure that Robert will, will uh, be popping back to answer questions, and uh, Robert, in the future, I'd love to invite you on to one of our future panels as well, um, another project that, that we are doing where we're going to bring experts on. Um, and we're going to have a community conversation because Real Hospitality Live um, and Hustle Hospitality Network is uh, designed to be a community for people in the industry to be able to ask each other, ask each other questions. Hey, where can I find this guy? Where can I find the best one of this? Where can I find the, the, the best equipment, the best service, the best product? So, and I would love to invite you um, onto a future episode and also um, uh, our future web uh, webcast uh, that we are designing as well so i'm looking forward to speaking with you uh, many more times thank you so much chef i appreciate it and i absolutely take that as an honor to be a part of any panel that you might put together uh, because i certainly have a, a passion for this industry so thanks so much well have a wonderful day and uh, we'll talk again soon and thank you everybody for joining us bless you and bless everybody thanks